Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Century Golem Edition. Now, Century Golem Edition was published by Plan B Games and was designed by Emerson Matsuchi, which is right there. Now, this is the second theme for Century. Now, Century is a game, but they've done a few different themes. Uh, they've done two themes so far, and there's more coming, so they get different subtitles. The first one was Century Spice Road. This one is Century Golem Edition. But mechanically, as I understand it, they're all the same game. They just have different themes and different artwork on it. So obviously from that, you, you can infer that the themes are going to be pasted on. Uh, it's pretty easy to tell. But let's have a look at it. So the game is for ages 8 and up. It is for 2 to 5 players and is listed as a 30 to 45 minute game. Now, let's start there. So for the 2 to 5 players, I have played this game a few times at different player counts, including 2 players. Uh, I have not played it at 5 yet, but I have played it with as many as 4. And I can tell you that this game plays equally well at different player counts. It plays quicker at two players, but you still get the same experience that you do at four players, and it plays very well at four players. So there's there's no mechanical differences in the rules between the different player counts, and the game does not feel like just a back and forth at two players. So it really is a proper two to five player game. The ages eight and up is mainly because this the rules of this game are quite simple. And it's an appropriate starting age for this game. Eight. It, you you can teach an eight-year-old this game. This is uh, for a midweight game, and it is. It does feel like a midweight game. This is probably one of the easiest to teach and learn midweight games that I have ever played. It's as easy to teach and learn as a lightweight game. But then when you play it, it feels like a midway game, which is really kind of bizarre. I think Emerson Matsuchi has done a really great job of making this one of those games that's five minutes to learn a lifetime to master, and that's fantastic in this modern day to be able to do that. And as for the 30 to 45 minutes, um, that's a pretty good estimate of, of most normal size games, though two-player games can even be Quicker. They could be even 20 to 25 minutes, especially once you get used to the rules. But a normal three, four, or five player game, that half an hour to 45 minutes, is a good estimate. So let's have it a, a look at what comes in the box. So now, if you watched my unboxing of this, you will know that I was severely surprised at how small the rules were to this. I was expecting a rule book, not just a two-sided piece of cardstock with rules on it, but that's all there is to it. And that's all it needs. The rules are very economical. They tell you what you need to know. They have uh, diagrams to show you what you need to know. They're really well done. This is one of the nicest rule sets I've ever seen. There's no ambiguity. There's the right amount of diagrams, the right amount of text. and. This will you'll be ready to play this game after about 10 minutes of looking over the rules and then you can teach everybody else and that's it That's about all you need to be ready to play a game of century and that's fantastic Now the next thing that come comes in the box and is really the primary component to the game if you will is the cards and there are quite a few cards here uh, which are separated into a few different decks. So now, the first deck here that I want to show you, these are the Golem cards. The back of this deck looks like that. And then on the front, you have pictures of different Golems. Now, in reality, these are just point cards. You need to get the collections of the correct gem resources there on the bottom to purchase these, and then they are worth the number of points that are shown there for each Golem. But I do want to draw attention to, while the theme is very pasted on, obviously, as they pasted on two themes so far and have two more coming, the artwork in this is great. It reminds me of, some. it's somewhere between a Studio Ghibli film and a Disney film. 
And I like it. Like some of these really make me think of movies like Castle in the Sky or um, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. If you're familiar with the Studio Ghibli movies, and and that's great. I, another one I just want to show this. Some of these uh, bits of artwork are really fantastic. So that's what the Golem cards look like. Now the main deck is the trade cards. These are because what you're actually doing is you are being traders who trade the gems that are required to bring these golem to life. And you start out in your hand with one each of these two cards, the purple border cards being the starting cards. And then the rest of the deck has um, these various sorts of trade cards. Again, with very nice illustrations showing people um, trading gems or uh, appraising gems or finding gems, things like that. And again, these are very nice and they show you, um, oh, other side, they show you language independently exactly what the mechanic is of what the card does. Because you collect these and it's not, it's not a deck collecting, uh, it's not a, it's not a deck building game. They, they say it's a hand building game, which even though that sounds like it could be something similar to deck building, in actuality, the hand building elements of this really feel more like an engine building game, which is really cool. And I do love the whole engine building mechanic. This feels a lot like that. The final set of cards are your caravan card. And everybody gets one of these. And I got to draw attention to something with, with these caravan cards. Because now they, they are mainly to show you how many gems you're allowed to hold at a time. Because there's a space for each gem. But they... Uh, they put in this, and I'm not so sure if it was Emerson who came up with this or someone at the company, but this is one of the simplest and, and best ways to tell who goes first. One of the caravan cards has a little crystal in one of the top corners there. And what you do is you take this plus a number of other caravan cards without the crystal equal to the number of players who are playing. You shuffle them up, you deal them out. Whoever gets the crystal is the first player. That's great! I think they need to do this more with other games. Maybe if, if a game doesn't have a card like this to, to limit your number of resources, maybe with cheat sheet cards. I mean, that, that's a fantastic and easy way to see who goes first. Now, the next component I wanna show you are the coins. So, now this is the only place I have a slight gripe about this game. Now, the coins are these really nice, and that doesn't, it's not the gripe. They are these really nice metal coins. So you have silver coins here. They have the C for century on them. And then you have copper coins here. Again, they look identical, but they are copper. They are the same uh, mold, though, obviously. And these are proper metal. You can hear the clink. Very nice production qual uh, quality. This is the only real gripe I have with the game, though, is that for some strange reason, copper is more valuable than silver. And that is something that a lot of, everyone who plays this game goes, wait a minute, Copper's worth three while silver's worth one? I don't understand. I don't know why they did it that way, especially since, I mean, at first when I was looking, I was, oh, well, maybe they're supposed to be nickel, but no, in the rules, they are named as silver. I mean, it's something you could easily swap in house rule and make the silver ones more, more valuable. So far, we haven't done that. I'm just trying to get used to the copper being more valuable. It just seems like a weird little thing. It's not much, it's not really a, a real complaint, mind you. It's a minor gripe. And then, this is the most amazing thing. Now, this, this insert is fantastic, and it fits everything in here. You take this plastic top off, and you have all of the gem resources in these little dishes. And they separate, you take, just take the dishes out, and you separate them in order of value on the board, and there you are. It, half of the setup of the game that could have taken a long time if all they had done was put little Ziploc bags in these and you had to pour them and gather them uh, together each time. That takes away huge amounts of setup and cleanup time by putting them in these dishes. And I really have to draw attention to this because some companies are really raising the bar when it comes to inserts. And with games like Century, and also another one that's done this is um, uh, Wasteland uh, Delivery Service where you have part of the insert are actual dishes that you just pull out and put on the table and it really, really cuts down on your setup and breakdown time. This is awesome and I think more companies need to do this in the future because in reality, we want to spend more time playing your games, not setting them up and breaking them down. 
and this is great. I definitely, other companies need to take note. So that's everything that comes in the box for Century Golem Edition. So let's head to the table. I'm gonna show you how it's played. Then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna review it. I'm gonna rate it. And we're gonna get a second opinion from Len. Okay, so here we can see a three player game of Century Golem Edition set up. So the first thing you need to do is line up your gems in value order. Now the least valuable is the yellow gems and the most valuable is the magenta gems. So there we go. We have the three players sitting around the table and every player gets their starting hand of two cards, which are this card, which gives you two yellow gems. That's why it just shows two yellow gems on it. And this card, which shows the two gray gems, which is not a color of a gem with an up arrow, that is the ability to upgrade two gems. You can upgrade the same gem twice or two different gems once, that's your choice. And that is in my hand and that is in every player's hand. Then we shuffle up the golem deck and deal out five golem cards, which of course are the point cards. The card furthest away from the deck gets twice the number of players in copper coins above it. And the one that is second most far away from the deck gets twice the number of players in silver coins above it. Then the next deck, which is the merchant deck, it is shuffled up and uh, six cards are dealt out there. Then every player gets their randomly dealt caravan card and the player on that side of the table over there has the gem on the caravan card, so they are the first player. And then a starting number of gems is given to each player based on whether they are first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. The further you are away from the first player, the more gems you get to counterbalance that. So in the case of a three player game, the first player gets three yellow gems and the other two players each get four yellow gems. Now on your turn, you are allowed to take one action and your choices of action are to take cards from here. The first card is free and the additional card, if you wanna take a different card um, you can only take one card if you want to take the first card, it is free. If you want to take the uh, other cards in the row, you have to drop gems on them before taking a later card. And if someone takes the card with, with a gem on it, they get to take the gems. Every time you take a card, you slide them all down and deal more out from the deck. Another choice of an action you can do is if you have the right uh, bunch of gems listed on the bottom of one of the golem cards, you can buy it by trading those back to the bank. If you buy one of the golem cards that has a uh, the silver coins above it or the copper coins above it, you get one of those coins. The golems are worth the point amount listed on them. Copper coins at the end of the game are worth three points and silver coins are worth one point. In addition, any gem you have on your card that is not yellow will also be worth one point. And then uh, the only other two actions you can do is to play a card from your hand to do what it says or to rest. And when you rest, all the cards you've played that are in front of you now because you played them, you can just pick those up and bring them right back in your hand. And that's the whole game. So let's go through a few turns. We'll show you how this goes. So the first player is going to take the first card that is free. And we're going to slide them all on down. Okay. And now the second player is going to take the second card, which is also free for them. They don't have to pay anything. And we're going to slide them all down. Now, the third player is going to drop gems on the first and second card to take the third card. Slide the rest down. And we're already back to the first player. This one action a turn is a very quick, very quick to keep it moving, very quick to move on, uh, right on back to your turn. You're never waiting a long time. So they are going to play a card, show that card to the camera there. The card has, it says three yellow gems and you get to trade it in for a magenta gem. So they're giving three gems back to, to, to the bank and trading it in for magenta, which is the most valuable gem that is really, really good. Then the second player is gonna play a card which just gives them two yellow gems and one green gem. So they are taking that for themselves. And the third player has decided they're gonna take the first card here, which gives them a free gem and another card in their hand. And again, we slide it all down, deal one more up. And we're already back to the first player again. So now the first player is going to <clears throat> play the two yellow card that they start with. So they get two yellow gems. Here you go, first player. And the second player 
is going to take the first card there and the gem that was on it. Very good move. And now back to the third player. The third player is going to play this card, which actually straight up gives them a magenta gem, which is very valuable. So now this is how the game plays. So you go around, you get cards, you put gems on cards to get more valuable cards that are further on. You build up your resources on your caravan card until you have a combination of gems that equals the cost of one of these cards. So for instance, if I say through some manipulation managed to have uh, four green gems, let me just show you that. When my, when my turn, which I am being the third player here, when my turn came around for an action with these four green gems, I could trade these four green gems into the bank to buy this second golem here, who is worth eight points. I put him face down in front of me, and because he was in front of the silvers, I get to take a silver coin, which is worth an extra point, and they would all slide down as well to refill the golems there. Now you play until you reach uh, until one player reaches a a certain number of uh golem cards which triggers the last turn now in a two to three player game that is six golem cards in a four to five player game that is five golem cards so that it will not uh drag on too long in a larger player count but as soon as one person does everybody uh beyond the first player finishes getting their last turn in so that everyone has an equal number of turns and then you count up your points and whoever has the highest point total wins and again the points are the points on the golem plus three points for every copper coin one point for every silver coin and one point for every gem other than yellow gems that you have and that's it that's the whole game of century golem edition so now we're going to head back i'm going to tell you how it feels i'm going to rate it and review it and then we're going to get a second opinion from len Welcome back. So that was how you play a game of Century Golem Edition, and also that's kind of how you play a game of Century Spice Road, and that will be how you play a game of Century, I think, New World and Century Gateway to the East. They're all the same game. They're just putting different themes on them so you can get whichever theme you like best. For me, I was really digging on the fantasy theme of making golems. I think that's great. But, you know, that is the first thing I really need to talk about, is that the theme is just pasted on. This is an abstract engine building, or as they like to call it, a hand building and resource management game. The, the designer, Emerson Matsuchi, really, really focused in on the mechanics. He, just, he focused on the mechanics and they worried about the themes later. So is the theme pasted on? You bet your ass it's pasted on. But they're not even trying to hide it. They're not trying to pass this off as a theme-tastic game and, and then you're buying it and getting it home and being surprised. No, they're letting you know. You, they're letting you know that they are putting multiple themes on this because any theme can work with this mechanic, at least any theme that has to do with either building or trading things. And in this case, you're trading gems to build the golems, and, and that's the theme that, that this version goes with. So, yeah, the, the theme is pasted on, but... This particular theme is really fun for me. I like the theme of building the golems. And the artwork is gorgeous. Again, just look at this, this cover illustration there of the giant golem looking at the, the tree there while a trade caravan is going by trading gems to make more golems. It's beautiful. It really looks like a Miyazaki uh, film. I'm a big fan of the Studio Ghibli Miyazaki movies, and, and this really feels like them. And it also, in, in, a, in some of the illustrations, feels a little bit like some of the Disney films, too. Um, there's some of these cards that make me think of the movie Aladdin, especially the merchant cards looking at things. It really makes me think of the market scene from the movie Aladdin. And that's cool. It's, it's, it's a family-friendly artwork style, but it, it evokes... Um, it, it, it brings up these memories of, of, of old animated movies you've seen, and I dig that. So while the theme is pasted on, the theme is good, and I like it. As for the mechanics, the mechanics are so elegantly simple, and yet made, made amazingly deep by the combination of cards that you get, and what order you play them in, when you decide to do your, your um, rest 
uh, action to bring your cards back. And, and the decisions of whether or not to play a card to get a couple gems or to draw a new card to get one gem that somebody left on it and get a new card to then further prolong doing the rest action. These decisions are great and they make the game much deeper than the rule, the, the light rules would have you believe at first. This is, for me, this is my new go-to gateway engine building and resource management game when I'm wanting to teach people how to play an engine building or resource management game. This is gonna be my game I, I pull out on the table because you'll be playing this game in five minutes after beginning teaching them how to play it. You, you are able to teach it and people are able to learn it that quick. It's, it's amazingly easy to teach and learn. And it's really fun. It's very enjoyable. Um, I really like this game. I'm going to play this game with, with veteran gamers who like playing games and want a, a mid-weight, quicker game to play on game night. And I'm also going to bring out this game with brand new gamers because it's, it's a great gateway game to teach them some some more advanced mechanics and an easy way. After playing this, they could later graduate on to more complex engine building resource management games like say, Terraforming Mars, which you don't want to start somebody off with Terraforming Mars because it's a little more complicated. But after this, if they get this and play a few games of this, you could totally graduate them onto a much heavier game like that. And that is awesome. I really like Century Goal Edition. I'm going to want to play it many times. I can play it with just about anybody. It plays well at two players. It plays well at three players. It plays well at four players. Haven't played it at five yet, but I hazard a guess it plays well at five players. And that's why I give Century Golem Edition 8 out of 10 stars, because I really like this game. I'm going to ask to play it many times in the future. This is a game that I could see myself pulling out and playing on almost any given day. Really enjoy it. But second opinions matter. So let's get a second opinion from Lynn. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to Century Golem Edition? So now, her she liked it. Seven is a positive rating, which says that she enjoyed the game and will play it anytime someone asks. But didn't quite like it as emphatically as I did at eight. And, I, and Lynn and I have talked about this a little bit. And she's told me that one thing, she finds it, um, she doesn't like the really pasted on theme. She feels like they either should have made the mechanics match the themes a little bit more or they should have made it uh, almost completely themeless. And, and that's just like a little pet peeve of hers. She feels that abstract games like this should just sort of be themeless. Uh, that being said, she did enjoy the game and did like the mechanics, and that's why she gave a seven. So Century Golem Edition, eight stars from me, seven stars from Lynn. That is a definite two thumbs up review from us here at the Board Game Captain. So, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns either on Century Golem Edition or on this video? Be sure to put them in the comments down below. And if you in enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give this video a like, share this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And hit the little bell icon on my page so you will get alerts whenever I put up a new video. And until next time, game on.